Accounting Equation and Excel. Creating the Accounting Equation Worksheet Part Number 2. Get ready and some coffee because we're about to learn the accounting foundation, the accounting equation using Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire sheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. If you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Down below, example, practice, and blank tabs. Example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank sheet and we'll be continuing with the blank part of the sheet this time practicing our Excel skills and formatting as we move forward. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building. We're going to be constructing a worksheet to construct our accounting practice problem within building it rather than with the debits and credits with an accounting equation format, remembering there's pros and cons to thinking about accounting from an accounting equation standpoint and from a debit and credit standpoint that we touched on a bit last time. But we have the recap. What I'd like to be able to see is with every transaction, a recap of the summary of the accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity. And then with every transaction, I want to be able to list out not only assets, liabilities, and equities, but the actual accounts which will be subcomponents of the assets, which can be further broken into current assets versus fixed assets and possibly even other assets. But we're just going to use these two categories for now. And then the accounts within those categories, cash, undeposited funds, accounts, receivable, inventory, furniture and equipment, depreciation. And then with the liabilities, we have the current liabilities and long-term liabilities. We're going to start off with only current liabilities, accounts payable, payroll, sales tax, and then the equity, which can be broken out into the balance sheet equity, which can further be broken out into the entire income statement, which we can think of as, in essence, the timing behind part of the equity statement, which we'll talk more about as we build it. So we have the balance sheet component, owner draws, owner's equity, income statement, which is income and expenses. And then we have our subledgers supporting the accounts receivable and accounts payable accounts tracking information by who owes us or who we owe the money to depending on if it's accounts receivable or accounts payable which will only be there for on an accrual basis which we'll talk about more as we construct that component all right and then we're going to have to go back to the beginning part here and add the bit where we're going to have the actual transactions all right, the practice tab has some pre-formatted cells, so you can kind of fill in the information as we go if you want to do it that way, just to have a less proactive component. But we're going to be practicing Excel as we are in the blank tab. So we've done the accounting equation kind of overview, and then we did the assets section, and now we're on the liabilities. And I started the liabilities last time with the full liability section here and then the current liabilities, and then the three accounts within the liabilities. Let's end this off. I'm going to put some brackets around this bit. So I'm going to go to the Home tab, and then Font Group, drop down, and I'm going to put a thick brackets around those. So it gives that line up. I'll do the same thing here. Let's put some thick brackets around these. And then I'm going to select uh, just our cells 
for our data input and I'm going to make those red and white. So I'm going to go to the home tab, font group, let's make it drop down and I make it a little bit darker red on the default. And then with the drop down on the brackets, we'll make brackets around those. All right. So now we're going to be going to uh, the equity. So within the equity, this is often the most confusing component within equity. And let me just recap this idea. Equity represents the owner's claim to the assets in the business. So remember, if I rewrite this accounting equation as assets minus liabilities, it equals equity, which on a book basis is the value of the company, which doesn't always tie into a market basis because the assets might not be valued at complete market value and the liabilities, right? So, but that's gonna be our baseline if I was to sell the company, for example, of what we, we might start thinking about what the value of it may be, would be the equity side of things. Equity gets confusing for multiple reasons. Uh, one is the type of entity that we have. So if you think about equity in general, it doesn't matter what type of entity if you think about it as all one number, meaning I don't care if it's a partnership, a corporation, a sole proprietorship, the equity represents ownership interest. However, if it's a sole proprietorship, it's easy because you only got one person that owns it. Whereas if it's a partnership, you have a situation where who owns what? So assets minus liabilities equals equities. But if you have five partners, which partner has which claim, how much claim to the net assets of the company? So to track that, it's actually the most complex oftentimes format for tracking equity, even more complex than a corporation oftentimes, because like with the accounts receivable, you've got to track in essence, an equity account, a capital account per partnership. But you can still think of total equity as you would for a sole proprietorship. It's just that you have to further break it down into who owns them. You would think that corporations would be more difficult than a partnership because corporations are typically what we think of as the big ones, that what you would think have the most complexity, but they're actually less complex in many ways. That's what allows them to get bigger because of less complexity. In other words, instead of breaking out the equity to every owner of the corporation, in this case, shareholders, we say, hey, look, we're going to have equal chunks of ownership, kind of like currency, kind of like dollars. They have a fixed unit price already. And then we're going to define who owns what by how many of those fixed amounts they have. How many, in essence, dollars do they have would be the equivalent in this analogy. That means I can just break out the equity into basically a like a retained earnings account and a capital account which represents initial owner investment versus the accumulated earnings of the company so that's one thing that's confusing but the bottom line is you can think of equity as no matter what type of entity the ownership's claim to the entity that we further than the need to break out based on partnership corporation sole proprietorship the other thing that's confusing is that the equity representing the book value of the company could be represented on the balance sheet and will be represented on the balance sheet as of a point in time, telling us where we stand as of that point. However, we also want to know like how we got there, the story. And so that's kind of like breaking the equity out into the story, the activity, the time frame component, which is the income statement. And that's where the revenue and expenses come in. So when we report equity, we could report it shorthand or in a condensed format on the balance sheet, which has condensed all the time frame of income statement into one number equity. Or we could say this is equity before that time frame. This is equity before last year. And the income statement is now breaking out in more detail, the activity statement, income statement, which is also part of equity. That's what happens on like a trial balance. So we'll see more of that as we go through, but that means that we, we have basically a balance sheet component. So I'll say balance uh, sheet, and I'm gonna make this uh, blue and it's the same color blue home tab font group. Let's make this dark blue and then white. So we have that bit and the two uh, 
names we're going to accounts we're going to put under here is owner draws now the draws represent the owner draws for sole proprietorship which we're thinking in terms of if it was a corporation you could basically think of draws as equivalent to dividends the difference between draws and dividends by the way is is that in a corporation it's the management or the the board of directors and management that are going to be determining who how much money is going to be given out in terms of dividends that becomes kind of an issue for the owners they don't have control in essence over how much is going to come out unless they have ownership interest 51 percent or whatever of of the corporation whereas in a sole proprietorship or a partnership the owners partners or sole proprietor have the ability to take out whatever they want because uh they're the owners of of the company so so that's kind of like the difference there and then we've got owners equity now i'm going to you might call this capital account as well which would what it would be called for a partnership so this is going to be the equity interest uh in the business which if it was a corporation would be called retained earnings that's the account that the net income from the income statement closes out into now in a corporation you have the owner's equity would be equivalent to retained earnings and then you might have another account called uh the the capital account representing the investment from the owners into the into the company okay so then and and so okay so that's that so let's go ahead and then keep on uh let's let's format like this i'm going to go home tab uh clipboard paintbrush and let's do the same formatting for the accounts so there are those all right and so then we're going to have an income statement state you might also see it called a profit and loss statement in some software such as quickbooks defaults to profit and loss basically the same thing the timing statement which in essence is part of equity even though it's represented in a completely different statement the income statement it's breaking out part of the equity that would be on the balance sheet and if we represent everything under one rubric of the accounting equation the income statement is going to be part of in essence the equity account meaning we're going to break out part of the equity okay so we're going to go to the home tab font group let's make this one like a uh, lighter blue maybe this blue and white so there we have that that looks good okay and then i want the name i want it to be how big 11 is that what we had over here we want 14. let's bring it up to 14 and we'll bring this up to 14 and this one was at this one should be at 16. let's bring that up to 16 and these are at 11. okay and then on the income statement we have sales which you might call uh revenue or you might call income noting that the difference in those names are usually dependent upon the type of industry that we are in if we are a a selling inventory we typically will call it sales oftentimes if we're selling services we might call it revenue or uh income income's kind of a generic term that we might use instead of revenue so cost of goods sold which i'm going to abbreviate as cogs cost of goods sold which would only be an account which is in essence an expense account but the most important expense account if all we sell is inventory because the largest expense that we will have if we sell inventory is the cost of the inventory it also has an accrual component that we might have to deal with as well so we'll talk about that remembering that if you're doing bookkeeping for someone you want to keep in mind do i want to deal with inventory and if so what kind of companies do i want to pick up in order to deal with inventory and or do i not want to deal with some complex components of inventory and make sure that you uh weed out those kind of businesses remember and i have to put this out because this is a problem i had a lot of times running a business and that is trying to trying to see which clients i i want in my business model and then saying and then going after those clients aggressively while also we not going after and being able to say no which is the hardest was hard for me to clients that don't fit your business model because because even if you can do those they're going to take more time because they don't fit the the system that you've set up to do efficiently so that's really important on the bookkeeping side what 
exactly are you trying to do? Where are you trying to specialize? And and then stick to that and don't let people, you know, convince you otherwise. So and then we have insurance expense. I'll just put EX for expense. So that's going to be typical for most businesses, which will have usually at least liability insurance and that will be involved. You have to be careful with other types of insurances like life insurance, for example, or car insurance. Is that going to be included because you're going to have other car payments for the car? It might be personal and business for taxes and so on and so forth in the United States list. Miscellaneous expense that we'll add. And so you got to be careful with miscellaneous. You don't want to dump it. That shouldn't be a dumping ground. We'll talk about that later. Office ex supplies. So we'll call it office supplies expense, which is also kind of a, a confusing one because if you have office supplies, the question is how valuable are those office supplies? Are they subject to shrinkage and whatnot? Should you be tracking office supplies like inventory or not? And so we'll talk more about that. Payroll uh, expense, remembering that payroll is something that often has added problems along with it because it's going to be subject to more laws and regulations. And therefore, although most accounting, double entry accounting system, in other words, is the same anywhere, it's like math, the regulations will make things different. Usually the tax regulations that come along with things such as payroll. So we'll be looking at it from the standpoint of U.S. payroll taxes, but uh, you could, you, you're you going to have different laws. That's another way, area you want to specialize in. Do I want to deal with payroll? Which payroll do I want to deal with? Do I want to specialize in payroll in a specific location? If I don't want to do payroll, do I get companies that don't have payroll and that's who I go after? Or do I try to come up with a networking system with other payroll companies so that I can do what I do and they do what they do and we work together. We have telephone expense. So that's pretty clearly on most businesses and then utilities. Now utilities is an interesting one because it used to be that like the telephone, the trash, the 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 uh, the electric, the gas was all under utilities. But now the telephone is often broken out in and of itself, and you might break out other things uh, like electricity if they were important in and of themselves. And so you always have this interplay between how specific do you want to get. So we'll talk more about that as we go. But this just gives us a quick list of income statement items where we'd have income minus expenses giving us the net income. The net income is what rolls in or is part of the equity that's typically reported on the balance sheet under one number, which is included in equity. Notice that if I look at this income statement and it comes out to net income, revenue minus expenses, then the equity over here, I'm going to have to start with equity before that, right? So if this was what happened in a year, the equity over here has got to be the equity from before that year, which I'm then adding the net income to to get to current equity as of the current point in time, which would typically be reported on uh, the income statement. That's the closing process that we'll get into as we work the practice problem. All right, let's select this one again, format, paint that. We'll put that across here. And so then I can maybe do some formatting here. Maybe I select like uh, I, maybe I can make these like a little shorter. This one needs to be long enough to put the balance sheet in. So maybe right there. This one I can make a little bit smaller. This one I can make a little bit smaller. This one needs to be a little larger to get the insurance in. This one I can make smaller because it miscellaneous. This one is about as wide as it can go. And this one needs to be a little bit larger to get the telephone in there if I spelled it right at least. And then utilities may be a little smaller. All right, let's do some formatting here. So I'm going to format this all the way across with the blue and white. Blue, or let's make dark blue and white. So that's all equity. And then this is going to be all the way across the light blue. Boom, light blue or lighter blue and white. Okay. And then let's put some boxes around it. So I'm going to select this whole thing. Home tab, font group, I'll put uh, a bold border, thick border. I'll put a thick border around this. And then I'll put a thick border around this. Okay, that looks nice, doesn't it? 
Is it that nice? Let's then select all of this and go down. Oh no, K Paso there. That's not, that's too far. You have gone too far this time. Well, that's okay. I'll stop. This time you have gone too far. We're going to go, uh, oh, wait a sec. I need different colors. I'm going to make this dark blue over here. Go home tab, font group, make this one dark blue, and then borders around it. I'll make the text white. So when I go in here, it'll be a dark blue with white text. All right, and then down here, we'll make the lighter blue because this is the income statement accounts. So I'll make this light blue or lighter blue at least, bordered and white. So this will look like that on there. Okay, that looks good. All right, all right. I think this looks excellent. Okay, so then let's copy this down. I'm gonna copy this equal sign. Let's copy that all the way down. So I've get the equal sign all the way down. And then this has the plus, I'll copy that. Control C and I'll paste that all the way down. Boom. And then let's do this and then that's that. Okay. Okay. That's looking snazzy. All right, let's put our subledger. Now I might have to adjust the subledger on the end, but the point of the subledger is that accounts receivable over here I'm going to need to track not only who owes me that money, uh, not only that th that we are owed that money, but who owes us the money, which I cannot track in just one account. So notice I would only have the sub ledger if we had an accrual account because accounts receivable is an accrual account, which means we do, we do work before we get paid and therefore have to collect on it and therefore need to track who owes us the money so we can make sure that we're collect we're going after that money and collecting it. So to do that, we typically need a sub ledger over here. So I'm gonna make a skinny A B. And so we might have to adjust this letter later, but I'm gonna just start out and just to remind myself so accounts account, let's just call it account receivable. And I'll say subsidiary ledger. Now, subsidiary ledger is what you'll hear in accounting textbooks. Might not be exactly what they call it like in accounting software because they'll just say this is the AR report or something like that. But it's a sub ledger because it's going to add up to the same balance as the accounts receivable general ledger or account on the balance sheet or trial balance or accounting equation but it'll break it out in a different format, giving us different detail, in this case, by who owes us the money. All right, let's select this. Let's make this centered alignment. Let's center it. Whoa, that's not cool. That's not right. Let's not center it. I could center it across there, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, let's go to the drop down and make this green. I think I made it dark green, right? And white. That's the same green, isn't it? And then I'm just going to put on this tab, uh, total. I'll put the total over here and I'm going to put the, the, the list. I'm going to put vertically who owes us the money, the, the, uh, customers on this side. I'm going to make this our black band. So it matches. So I'm trying to line it up so it matches nicely. And then let's put our border around here, font group drop down. Let's put a border around this. That looks nice. And then I'll just make this green for now. So I'm going to make it green, white, all bordered. All right. And so then we'll do the same thing for the accounts payable. So I'll select this drop down to make another skinny on the AE home tab uh, format paint AE skinny. We'll call this accounts payable. And then I'll just say this equals the same name subsidiary ledger. So the accounts payable, less common for small businesses to have an accounts payable because they might just be paying things as they become due with cash or possibly credit card. But as companies get larger, uh, then it's likely that you're going to spend more time tracking your bills to pay them as late as possible because the time value of money becomes more important as the number of transactions come up. So if you can hold on 
to your money like a few days longer and pay it later over many transactions, that becomes a benefit, right? Not so much a benefit for if you don't have that many transactions. In other words, if you if you were to say your your credit card bill or your utility bill came today, but it's not due to be paid in, until 15 days from now, does it make a difference if I pay it today or 15 days from now? Not really, because it doesn't really matter. But if I had a thousand transactions of the size of that utility bill or transactions that were a lot larger in dollar amount because of inflation, it does start to make a difference, a big difference over time to, 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 to pay them 15 days later, if at all possible. Okay, so that's why small businesses are probably like, I'm not really worried about it. If I got the cash flow, I'm going to pay it uh, because I'd rather that's the easiest thing to do. I don't want to get any late fees or anything. Larger businesses are okay. So so that's why we have the same thing. We have to track who we owe the money to if we're going to be tracking the accounts payable and not simply paying the bills as we get the bills. So let's go to the home tab font group. Let's make this uh, red and white and then I'll put a border around this and I'll do the same thing. This is going to be the total and I'll make this. Let's make this formatted black home tab uh, format paint. We'll make that black and then we'll select all of this down to here and we're going to go home tab font group. We'll make this red and bordered. Okay, let's go back to the left. All right, let's make this. I think these skinnies can be a little skinnier. I got I'm going to I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to choose all of these skinnies. So see, I've got the three skinnies selected and I'll make them the same width by just adjusting the width on this one a little bit. And now all the skinnies are the same, making it look a little bit more cohesive. All right, so that's nice. So now let's go back to the front and I need to put where the, like my data input would typically go. So I need to put that in front here. So I have to shift this whole thing to the right. So the way to shift things to the right is to just select the entire column. And if I add something with the entire column selected, QuickBooks always enters it to the left because that makes sense because, because that allows us to enter something to the left. Whereas if it went the other way, I wouldn't be able to enter something to the left of it. So I'm going to say, I want to have like how many, one, two, three, like four columns. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, selecting at the top all the way up here. So the whole column is selected so that when I right click on it, I want to insert. It knows that I don't want to insert cells because I can't insert cells because I have the entire column selected. The only option is to insert columns to the left. So it should insert four columns to the left. Boom. All right. And then I'm just going to put date. So that's going to be our date field. And then I'm going to put transaction. This will be like the description. Maybe say description. And then I'll make this a little bit larger. And then this is going to be the amount. So that'll be the amount. And, and then I'll make a skinny on the D. So I'm going to make this skinny J. Home tab, clipboard, take that. We'll put it on the D, making a skinny. And then I'm going to select this whole thing, make it black and white, maybe the same format as this one. So I'll go here and go format paint and make that the same format here. So that's at 11, 11. So that looks good. But I'll make the date. I like to have it formatted on the left. And maybe this one also, I'll left align it. Okay, and then when we enter the date, I want to make it like a generic problem without the year, but I have to enter a date. So like if I just do this and I start entering a date, then it, it's not going to format as a date because it's in number formatting. So I'm going to select this entire column. Now there's a couple ways you could select the entire column and select here and say I want to go to like a short date, but then like it gives you the year and I don't want the year. So I could say, okay, if I don't want the year, select the whole thing because I want to make it generic. I'm going to right click and format. And then I want to say that it's going to be date field. So I'm in the number date. 
And then I have this one, which I think is there by default. If it's not there by default, you can customize it and then, and then make, and then make one that's going to be what you, what you want it to be is uh month and then year, right? That's what I month and then year. So you can kind of create one if you, if you need to, but I think they have one now they didn't used to, or maybe I made it, but I have the one here that gives me the month slash, I'm sorry, the month <laughs> slash day. I don't want the year month slash day. So over here, it would be like M slash Y, right? Something like that. I haven't made a new one for a long time, so I can't really remember. But in any case, or else you can just add the year and that's fine. But I'm going to pick that one. And so now if I, if I entered 115, it just gives me the 115. It's still putting a year. You can see up top in the formula bar, 2024. But I'm only showing the 115 so I can make this kind of a generic worksheet that will hopefully last for all time into the future. And people are, won't be like, that's old, dude. That's like way old. And then they won't want to watch it because it's old. So I'm going to select all this. And then this time I like to make this my data input field, just a standard uh, blue. So I'm going to right click and this is just my preference. So you can pick whatever color you want, but this is what I typically pick. And then I'm going to go into actually wait, let's do it over here. Home tab, font group, drop down. This is the blue. If you don't have that, go into more colors. And then I go to this side, standard color wheel, and I always pick, here's the middle. It's the one just off to the left above it. Why do I pick that one? That's what the Excel is fun guy used to use before he switched to the, to the green. I don't really like the green as much because it reminds me of the dark times before Excel. We had to write things down and stuff. And my handwriting is terrible. So I like the nice blue. It's nice, calm blue ocean. And then I like to add some borders, home tab, font group. We'll put some borders around it. So there we have it. All right. So that's going to be it. And then this side, didn't I change? Let's, I need to change this side, control shift down. Well, I'll select the whole thing. Let's just do select the whole thing. Format cells. I want to make it currency, maybe negative numbers bracketed for this one and no dollar sign no decimals i'll add decimals if needed okay so when i put a number in here boom negative number boom turns it red all right lastly let's also just copy the format down here because i'm going to have my information on this side which i want to sum up on this side so i'm going to put some borders around this so i'll put a board i'll put a i'll put a dark border around this around this around this and then I'll add another green uh, space. Let's just format. Let's just do this. I'll copy this whole thing, copy the formatting, and I'll paste it right there. And I'll just keep it the same because that lines up to this area. And then I'm going to format paint this to be right here. So, and then maybe I copy these, copy this to here. Copy this to here and then here and copy this to here. And then below that, I'm going to put my green. So I'm going to make this the green. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to go home tab, drop down. We'll make that dark green and bordered. And then this one, I'm going to make that my red and border. So home tab font group, dark red. Wait, that's not dark dark red and bordered. And then this one, I'm going to make that dark blue and bordered. And then I'll copy this control C. We'll put that here. We'll copy this and we'll put that here. All right. So that's going to be our, our general formatting. I'm going to move this down, this description. I'm going to copy that and put it down here, delete it from up top, and I'll make this whole thing black. So let's make this just 
black and white so that because 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 this is where the actual data input is happening down here maybe i should do the same thing here too i'm gonna i'm gonna uh copy this and put it here and then delete this up top because so then i'm putting it down here so so now what i'm trying to do is say this is where the the description is going to be for what we do the transaction description and then we'll enter the description over here in accounting equation format on the same line, which will then be summarized back over here in the accounting equation. So everything will be on the same line, hopefully, is the idea as we go forward. So that's gonna be the idea. All right, let's spell check it. Spell checky. Balance, that's not how you spell balance, idiot. Furniture. Furniture, that one, I'm going to ignore that one. Ignore all. Telephone, tell, tell, telephine, telephine. Crying out loud, you're fired for spelling wrong. But no, I have spell check. So I don't, I could just fix it. All right, so then, so I think that's our general set. We might adjust this as we go, going forward, but that'll be our general kind of setup and then we'll enter our transactions and look at the impact of each of them from the accounting equation perspective.